Fora TV. The world is thinking. Now, not moving away from reproduction at the moment, you'll remember the person in the middle here. This is vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin. And you'll also remember <coughs> that's not her baby. That's the baby of her teenage daughter. And Sarah Palin's teenage daughter having her baby during the presidential election campaign in the United States reignited the debate about teenage pregnancy, both in North America and, of course, it sparked uh, a debate in Europe and the United Kingdom as well. And a number of interesting studies have looked at teenage pregnancy recently with some interesting genetic results. The general point I want to make here is that culturally, we tend to think of teenage pregnancy as a cultural problem. But there is actually, apparently, a genetic basis for teenage pregnancy as well. And that was the result of a study carried out in Australia last year, which looked at Australian twins and found that there was a strong genetic, an underlying genetic basis to teenage pregnancy. And you can understand why that might be so. Of course, the reproductive advantage to teenage pregnancy is if you have children early, you can have more of them. And that's likely to be selected in the population. And so the speculation made by these Australian researchers is that women are evolving into two kinds. And I use the word evolve in a very loose way there. There's a genetic pressure to have children earlier because those are the children that are going to be selected for, but there's cultural pressure to have children later. And we may get, we've got a cultural tension versus a genetic process. And, well, this is how it's played out in the British press recently. Teenage pregnancy, following the Sarah Palin story, was back on the agenda. And it was back on the agenda backed by the statistic that conception in 15 to 17-year-old girls increased from 40.9 per thousand to 41.9 per thousand between 2006 and 2007. And the tabloid press was covered in pictures like this. But actually, the real evidence tells, over the slightly longer term, a different story about teenage pregnancy. Uh, and these are many countries around the world and trends in teenage fertility. Uh, you don't have to read all the different countries, the general point that you can get at a glance is that the lighter bars for 1970 reflect substantially higher teenage pregnancy rates than the darker bars for 1998. So almost everywhere in the world, the trend in teenage pregnancy is downwards, not upwards despite one or two recent statistics. Um, Britain, of course, there is a lot of variation here, and some of the highest teenage pregnancy rates are, not surprisingly, in the United States, that bar there, the United Kingdom, that bar there, by contrast with uh, Japan, very, very low rates down here. And Ireland, oddly, the only one in this series which shows an increase in teenage pregnancy rates over that period of time. So. Culture, in this case, appears to be counter-evolutionary. On the one hand, there's an evolutionary force for teenage pregnancy. On the other hand, there's a rather strong cultural force which is encouraging women to have fewer children.